Hey, Eva. Can you hear me? Very good. The ground it occupies has been home to my people for at least 22,000 years. We're on secret land. Can you hear me? That's right. So, Fred, excuse me. Kid. Good news. Turns out Helio. I can't hear Marlon. Rumor is there's some serious repair work. The rocket's defective. Me, me, me. Hello, I'll be the president. No, this is their plan. What? Nero. How about now? It's not outside the park, Beth. You still can't hear me? Are you good? No, I cannot hear Marlon, yeah. but he could hear me. Oh, yeah. He could hear me, yeah. but I cannot hear him. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay, yes. Yeah, okay, good. Okay. Okay. Are you at home? Yeah. Why? Oh, okay. I, I rotated my table. Before you... oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I used to look before at your books and your books. Like, like, uh, uh, like, like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just, I just rotated the table. Okay. So I forgot my files at the office. Oh, are you still there? You froze. I don't know if you can hear me, but you froze. Yeah, I can hear you just fine now. So you forgot oh, okay. your, your file at the office? Yeah, I forgot the files at the office and I tried to go back, but uh, my the door wouldn't open. Oh, you know why? Because, no, it shouldn't because you and I should have 24 hour access. That's what that's what Jocelyn had told me, but uh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. But so, uh, I, uh, I think I'll be okay without them, but I just would have preferred to have them. Yeah, I know. It's I was thinking about that too because my signage yeah they only got two signature and seven no response so oh wow yeah i think your connection might be bad because you keep freezing okay we're fine now yeah also, I think there's something wrong with the city website. Uh, when, Because when we upload, I was looking at old agendas from last year. Uh -huh. And when I was clicking on them, it would open today's agenda. We have had that issue before. And I um, mentioned it to Amanda. I think someone was looking for the recording and they got the agenda hmm. for some other meetings. So yeah. um, I don't know if that issue ever got resolved. Yeah, I don't think it's a staff error. I think it's a technical issue because I can't imagine why we would accidentally upload to the wrong. Replace it with something else. Right. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Right. Was it busy today? Mm, not really. Not really. Okay. Is anyone else coming on? No. So I, I call Krista. Oh, okay. Oh, this is recording. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and we got an email from um, Michael Johnson that was sent out to everyone uh, regarding the, the roofing. roofing.
Oh, and Eva, uh, I got an email from Rick uh, stating that he was would probably not be able to make it. So um, during the roll call, mm -hmm. um, obviously you don't need to call his name um, at the end. Just say um, noting the absent, the excuse absent of committee member Rick Chow. Okay. And you told Joyce, right? I didn't get a chance to email her, no, but I will let her know when she gets here. Okay. Marlon, since um, she's signing on early, you can let her know. Yeah. Hi, Joyce. How are you doing? Hey, I'm fine. How are you doing? Doing well. Uh, Eve and I were just discussing that uh, I hadn't gotten a chance to tell you, but uh, we got an email from uh, committee member Rick Chow. Uh, saying yes. he would likely not be able to make it tonight. Oh, okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah, he said he was going to try, but uh, fairly unlikely. He's the only one, right? Uh, he's the only one I heard from. Yes. Okay, great. Thanks. Just turn my screen off briefly. Yeah. <clears throat>
Good evening, Raymond. Hi, Krista. Hello. Sorry. I have my post-it note on. Oh, okay. I thought maybe it was one of those um, studio where they have the background, the green screen. <laughs> it's like in my background. <laughs> Hi, Sharon. Hello. How is everybody? Staying dry for today, I hope. Right. <clears throat> Actually have weather. So it's just us, nobody wants to talk to us tonight. We have a few uh, members of the public, including applicants in the waiting room. However, I was, I was waiting to see if all the committee members would join first. Okay, okay. I'll be out for a minute. Okay. I think um, we're just waiting on uh, Vice Chair Wong. Mullen, do you know if we have any um, anyone for open form tonight? I have not received any emails or calls of someone wanting to join me. Okay, thank you. everyone. Okay, since it's almost seven o'clock, I will go ahead and admit the six people in the waiting room. Uh, uh, we are just waiting on Vice Chair Wong. Other than that, I think we can probably start when, when you're ready, uh, Chair. Okay, we'll wait a couple of minutes for Vice Chair Wong. <clears throat> Is it okay if we start now? Okay, uh, welcome to the March 3rd, 2021 Design Review Committee hearing. Um, 
normally we would start with the flag salute, but we will return to that hopefully very soon when we see each other in person and are in front of a flag. Um, do we have all members of the committee present right now? I, I can go ahead and do a roll call if you'd like. Okay, sure. Why don't we do a roll call? Okay. Uh, alternate committee member Tony Chow. Present. Uh, alternate uh, committee member Rick Chow has an excused absence. Uh, committee member McKay. Present. Committee member Lacon. Present. Uh, committee member Chang. Present. Vice Chair Wong. Present. And Chair Batnich. Present. So uh, before we begin uh, with our agenda items, I'll make some comments about procedures. Um, first, each committee member has received plans and has reviewed every item on the agenda and visited each site. The general order for the hearing <clears throat> for hearing each case will be as follows. The committee will ask staff any questions they may have. The chair will then ask the applicant or the applicant's representative to comment on the proposal. The hearing will then be open to the public and the chair will ask for comments for, against, or about the project. In all cases, please come forward and give your name and address. I will ask all public comments, <clears throat> all people here to make a public comment to kindly keep your comments limited to five minutes. At this conclusion of the public comments, the applicant will have a chance to respond and no further comments from the public will be accepted. The chair will then ask for comments from each of the committee members. If there is no motion for approval or denial, the DRC has the option of continuing the application to a future meeting. In the event of a denial, it is hoped that the applicant will have heard comments during the public hearing period and during deliberations that will be useful in resubmitting an application. It is important for the property owner to understand that once a project is approved by the DRC, the drawings become legal documents. If any changes are made to the project subsequent to approval without obtaining proper approval of those changes, then the property owner is in fact breaking the law. There is risk of having to change the project back to the originally approved design or paying a fine to the city of San Marino equal to the greater of 5% of the project valuation or $2,500 and then sub resubmitting the changes made to the project to the DRC. It is also important to understand that there is a 15 day appeal period after action has been taken for the applicant or any interested party to request the planning commission to review and act on the case. After all of the agenda items have been heard, two design review committee members will conduct the open forum. At this time, residents or their representatives may ask committee members about current or future projects relating to their property. Committee members can discuss the design with you, but cannot comment on how they might vote on the project. So uh, since we already took roll, we will now begin with the first item on our agenda, which is design review case number DRC 20-58 and DRC 21-03, 2640 Mission Street. Um, could we um, have the, um, the staff presentation, please? Sure. Uh, DRC 20-58 and 21-03 uh, are proposals to make exterior modifications and install business sign to an existing commercial building. Uh, exterior modifications to the facade of the building include removing two rectangular windows and a display niche and replacing it with a square display window with UV tint film. Uh, the replacement window will feature the same precast concrete detail surround uh, to match the rest of the facade. Uh, existing metalwork ab found above the doorway on either side of the door will be removed and replaced with uh, decorative metalwork. A new signage is also proposed for the building, which will measure approximately six square feet and will be in an antique bronze uh, finish. Uh, individual ch channel letters uh, will be backlit. Uh, this request was continued from the previous meeting on February 3rd uh, due to committee questions regarding the proposed UV tint film on the windows, uh, signage, precast concrete details, uh, and all of these details have been provided by the applicant, uh, and the applicant is here also to answer any questions. Uh, I have also confirmed with the applicant that uh, they are amenable to the condition to uh, remove the UV tint film from the, from the project. Um, that concludes staff's presentation. 
Okay, thank you. Are there any questions from committee members to um, uh, for Mr. Cervantes? Okay, um, is the applicant or applicant's representative uh, here to make any comments on the changes since we were last uh, since we were last here? Uh, that's me. I'm happy to comment. If there's any questions, I think. Uh, the main concern seems to uh, surround the precast concrete, both matching the shape and exterior sort of age of the piece, and we're happy to do that. Uh, we haven't sourced the specific molding yet, but we'd rather have it custom made for us. And there are ways to age it, so it's not mm. like it's brand new. You know, my intention is to have it look as if we haven't really changed much. Uh, I like the facade the way that it is. I just find it impractical for selling larger pieces of furniture in the small windows. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any questions for the applicant's representative uh, from committee members? I'll, I'll give it a try. I'll, I have a couple of quick questions. Okay. Um, to the applicant, uh, do your plan show that you are adding some kind of metal work uh, around the front door? Is that going to happen? Or because uh, the, the, currently the property has basically just clear glass around the front door. What is the intent of that? Uh, we do intend to add metal uh, surrounding the front door. There was metal there originally. Uh, as part of the remodel, it got taken down and pending this review, um, we wanted to see, you know, if we get approval for it, we'll go and have it made. We just wanted to make it a little bit more stylistically updated than the dated metal work that was there. So it will be put back, right? Basically you'll put back the, the, uh, the metal work then. The metal work. We will replace the metal work. It'll be different style. Uh, yeah. there. But yes, there will be metal work. Okay. I, uh, I have a question about that. Is the metal design that you included in the packet what you're planning to replace it with? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's going to be in that direction. I, I would ask the committee's flexibility and sort of some artistic license when we finally do put the metal work in, but it's going to be that Art Deco inspired styling that you see there. It's not going to vary too, too much from what you see. Okay, committee member Chang, did you want to continue? Uh, one, one more quick question uh, is regarding the signage. Uh, when you said the signage are backlit, this is having some kind of light in front installed between the plaster wall and the back of the letter. So at nighttime, it showed the silhouette. Uh, how does that work? Can you explain to us a little bit? More? So each of the letters is shaped and it's a U effectively, but it's turned upside down. So in this channel, the LED light will be inside so that, and then it's spaced about an inch away from the wall, allowing the light to sort of escape and it creates a halo effect. Mm. The, the light's not going to be visible. The light source will not be visible directly from the street. It's going to be reflected off of the wall. Okay. So you only see the silhouette then, basically. Yeah. The next time. yeah. All right. I understand. Uh, that, I don't have any further question. Okay, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. I, I just want to understand what we're seeing um, in these photographs uh, that were submitted, um, I think not last time, but just this time. There is a Cartier um, sign. I guess that's an illustration of what the backlit sign is going to look like, correct? And then some examples of the metalwork. And then the following page has some, what appears to be wood molding, is that right? I believe that is a precast concrete molding. Okay. Those are just examples of precast. Right, but they're examples, but are, as, as was the question before, is this the type of metal work that you're going to be using or metal work design? And you said no, sort of in that vein. Um, I just, you know, want to have some sense of what the plan is. I perhaps I'm confused. You were talking about there was molding. Uh, the mold of the precast concrete, not uh, the iron work. There were samples of iron work as well, but there were, there were both photographs. Of it. This here. Right, that's precast concrete. So that okay. Really these are the exact type, This are these exact pieces that you're using, or is this an illustration of what you're going to be using? That's an illustration of the style of precast concrete that will be used. The style of, but okay. 
when you say the style of, do you mean the style of the, the type of concrete, the type of shape? The, right. Like, yeah. Because the color is certainly not corrected in an aged concrete sort of way. So I also was wondering what the, yeah. what the illustration was illustrating exactly. It was illustrating precast concrete. The, I, I was not able to find any photos that show what precast concrete looked like aged when you purchase it. It's gonna be something that's gonna have to be done on site with concrete staining. Um, and I just have, there's no way to find photos of that. Right. And the Andaz, uh, is that the Andaz Hotel or is that, what is that above that? Forgive me, I don't recall. What you, what you... This photograph above it, I'm trying to, what is that illust illustrating? Planters, okay. that planters and the vegetation that might be in front. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, other question. questions? Yes, Vice Chair. Yeah, for the applicant, uh, in the previous meeting, the committee talks about the importance of having the entire front facade plaster be in a uniform piece because they'll be cut off of the two windows and replaced of a bigger window and things like that. So the, the hues and whatnot would be very uniform. And I just want to make sure that uh, the applicant understand that is important for the facade uh, um, appearance. And that is also the intent as well. You're saying that you'd like me to understand that the plaster on the front should be uniform in color? That's right. Yes. That would Great. Be Thanks for the confirmation. Um, I also have a question, another question, which is, um, will the, um, would, Will the person, I'm not sure if it's you who makes the signs or someone else, I'm guessing it might be someone else. Um, in any case, will the sign uh, be able to be on a timer so that it, it would shut off at a certain time? Uh, I think as part of California energy usage, there all things have to be with, on a lighting control panel, which we already do as part of our Reconstruction, we had to include a lighting control panel that shuts off all lighting, so yes. Okay, so do you, I mean, as the applicant's representative, would you be uh, amenable to a condition in which the light would be turned off at a certain time, for example, an hour after the close of business? Um, would I, can I ask what the purpose of that would be? Um, just not to have, you know, bright lights all over the, the city at night. Okay. And a little bit of a more subtle, elegant look. Sure. I think, however, though, I've spent some time on that street at night and there are many, many, many bright lights that are going on. So I don't think, I think mine is going to be a soft white light. I don't think there's going to be something that stands out in any way. Um, I think it'll fit in with the, with the current conditions. I mean, certainly the point of a sign with back, light. The backlighting does create a much more subtle effect. That's that's very true. Um, I think if well, you were to compare the brightness to the street lights and some of the things that are going on around, I'll be by far the most subtle light on the street. And for me, the point of signage is to then attract to, to have people know that I'm in business, even when I'm not open. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that the applicant would not be amenable to putting their sign on a timer to turn off at a certain time? Um, well, you, you suggested one hour after the close of business. I, I don't, I would prefer that it go a little bit later if there has to be a condition. I would prefer there not be a condition. I'm going to use my best judgment to put into the street and make sure that I'm a, a welcome neighbor to everybody and that I'm overall attracting and elevating the aesthetics. Um, but if there were a requirement placed, I'd prefer that it would be something a little bit later when the visible, when people aren't coming by, you know, something when they're sleeping perhaps. Mm -hmm. We can talk about that in um, community member discussion. Are there any other questions for the applicant, for the applicant's representative? Okay, seeing none, we will now move on to committee member discussion. Um, so 
we will go in order this time. Uh, Vice Chair Wong. Thank you. Um, uh, based on what is presented to us and the applicant's um, acknowledgement just a while back, I think it is um, my opinion that the. Uh, uh, I think, Marlon, you need to. Uh, yeah, I, I got it. Thank you. Got it. Thank you. So um, I think the concern that we raised last time, uh, in my opinion, have been taken care of. The molding around the new windows, the uniformity of the plaster and the painting in the front and the antique look of the iron work. Um, I agree that the backlit lighting is a lot more subtle and the size of the entire signage is quite, uh, um, I'll say subtle and subdued. So I understand this is a fairly uh, commercial street in San Marino standard. So given there's restaurant around and other more busy places around than other commercial projects that the committee has looked at in recent months, I would say um, it would make sense for this location to at least have its signage lighting be consistent with the practice of the area. And I personally would not think one hour after sunset or close of business is necessarily a must. I think there's still business around there. And the fact that there isn't really visibility of residents um, at this particular segment of the city would lead me to say that I'll be happy to be a little bit more, um, I'll say, uh, flexible and uh, be in the same um, platform as the other uh, members in the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, committee member Lacon. Um, hi, thank you. I, um, I agree with um, Commissioner Wong and I could uh, support the project um, with the condition that um, uh, was identified in the staff report for the removal of the UV film. And my uh, one concern um, would be the time of the lighting I think it, I think the halo um, type light is uh, very elegant, and I I think that it's not really emitting um, too much light. But I at the same time I I don't notice a lot of light in that area of the street with other businesses, uh, and uh, it is fairly close to the residential area, and I think the light can stay on longer than an hour after closing. And I understand the applicant's uh, desire to have light longer. Uh, but um, I don't know if uh, lights will be intended to stay on all night long. So I think there would be um, a much later time, but eventually the light would go off, even if it was, uh, I wanna say a time, but much later than after closing, but um, eventually would turn off. Um, uh, but other than that, I could support the project. Thank you. Committee member McKay. Thank you. Um, I, I, I don't uh, differ too much from my fellow committee members. I'm, I'm a little concerned that um, that on the drawings, the new exterior front elevation shows a very nice design here, um, which I understood to be sort of what we were being presented with and what we were going to be agreeing to. But then these, these photographs and these examples are just... Um, you know, the applicant's representative has noted that they're just examples and that he's looking for some flexibility on the design. So I could support um, the project tonight, but I think that we need some uh, conditions. Um, I would want the condition of the plaster in the front being uniform and the applicant's representative has already agreed to that. Um, uh, staff's condition that the UV tint film be eliminated. There's been some discussion about lighting control um, and then I don't know if we want to have, I'm just suggesting this for discussion, any condition about um, the design being um, either, um, if not identical to, very consistent with the drawings that have been presented to us. Thank you. Okay. Um, I believe, okay. Uh, I'll, committee member Tony Chow. Um, 
I, I agree with my fellow committee members. I think um, my main concern is also just the consistency on the front. Um, and maybe we can condition something on that with the plaster. I think as the example is kind of hard to, hard to imagine and we don't have anything exact to compare to. Uh, but besides that, I think this will be a, appreciate the, the applicant um, providing more information. And I think this will be a big improvement um, once, once we get to put this uh, design in place. Thank you. Thank you. Committee member Cheng. Yeah, I agree with uh, most everybody's opinion and I, I can go along with everything. Uh, if we were to put a condition on the signage, I would say um, they like to turn off after 12 midnight. It should not be on after midnight. The whole evening hours, I don't see that to be a problem. And it may even help lay up the sidewalk a little bit when people walk by. So uh, everything else, I think the, the applicant understands that uh, seeing some of the sample picture that he used, I think they understand that to keep that building uh, facade to to stay with the original character, I, I we can just make that part of the condition that all the uh, plaster finish to match the existing, uh, the color, the final color of the plaster to be uniformed uh, throughout uh, whether it's newly patched or existing should be one uh, single color throughout. Um, and other than that, I can approve it. That would be further uh, issue. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> So it sounds like uh, the committee is largely in agreement uh, about the condition, about having conditions on this um, project. If we were to approve it tonight, that would include uh, no UV film or no film on the windows. Uh, that there be, um, that the color of the uh, plaster finish would be uh, uniform and one single, and it would appear to be one single color. Um, <clears throat> there, it seems that mm, there is some agreement on perhaps some limitations on light, um, but that they be generous. Um, I was going to, con to suggest perhaps no light after 10 p.m. Uh, committee member Cheng, you said perhaps after midnight, I only came up with 10 p.m. because I think this is like the kind of, I don't think any businesses can be open then. People can't have loud parties then. People can't be disturbing anybody else then. So I just came up with, but I'm, I'm open on that and to whatever condition would put, turn the light off at some point. Uh, but I think it should be generous because of what everybody said. This is backlighting, it's very subtle. I think it should be, um, it shouldn't be a problem even if it is on uh, late. So the only thing that I am concerned about, which was mentioned by committee member McKay, is the, the metal work. This committee isn't used to approving things that it hasn't seen. And we got told in the presentation that the metal work is gonna be kind of like what we saw and it's gonna be kind of art deco, but it's gonna be different. And I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable with that. I, I just don't know what to do about that issue. I wish that this had been kind of locked up before it got to us a second time. But um, I, I, will, I will ask for a motion. Uh, I'll, I'll just start with a ping pong. I think I have the 10 p.m. in mind as well. I think for two reasons. A is that uh, restaurant in San Marino don't stay until 10, uh, 12, and San Marino is a fairly early town anyway. So nine or 10 would, would be quite reasonable and generous yet um, practical. So I think 10 should be good. And this will have some indicative um, um, measure to anything going forward for the committee as well. So I think, I think that rather than 12 is good. Um, I, I'll suggest maybe on the ironwork since that's not a big area and maybe language like uh, the look and the style would not deviate 
substantially uh, along the line. I just want to see how the other members would see. Uh, I can imagine there will be a major overhaul and I'm sure staff can handle that fairly easily. At a leave, minus a leave or two would be what I call not material, but if it's a totally different look became a coin rather than a leave, then that is very material. So I hope that yeah. would um, help us as a committee to uh, stand uh, firm with what we have been practicing so far. Right, yeah. I'm curious in, in, in working towards a motion that might work well and reflect the majority of the committee, are there any other comments about potential language for the conditions? I, I would suggest, uh, if I may, um, maybe not substantially. I would say that it's not going to deviate in any significant fashion from the from the drawings that have been presented, something along those lines. Um, it sounds good to me. Yeah, sounds good to me too. And ultimately this would be approved by, by Ms. Choi. Or by our, our staff. department. Okay. Any other suggestions for the motion from committee members in terms of the, the language, especially about that metallic part or about the light? Okay, so since we're done with that discussion, then I will uh, formally ask for a, uh, a motion from committee members. Let me go ahead and make a motion then. See if somebody else is, <laughs> seems to do it. I just want to check out the number. Okay, I, I move to approve um, DRC 20 58 and DRC 21 03 with the additional condition um, of staff report. One is that the um, backlit sign to be turned off. Uh, no later than 10 o'clock p.m. at night. That the um, that the metal grill work to follow what was presented and the and the design drawing uh, to to the degree that or to the for the to the intent of the original design drawing and uh, subject to uh, planning staff's approval. In conformity. Can we say it won't deviate in any significant fashion from the design that was submitted? That's good enough, sure. Just use those. To be, to be determined by staff. To be determined, yeah, right. Well, to be finally approved by, by staff. By, by, by right. Staff. Yes. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and the plaster and the UV film. Well, the, the, the UV film is already in the staff report uh, and the plaster, the, the plaster exterior wall plaster to be uniform in color and texture as the existing wall. Okay. Uh, the UV film, I believe the recommendation was that we place that as a condition. Oh, okay. Then I'm sorry. That, then the yeah. UV film is to be eliminated. So yeah, no, the fil film on windows of any sort is to be eliminated. Correct. Okay, did that. you guys get all of that? <laughs> I think you is sharp enough to get all of that. I, yeah, I got it. The question <clears throat> from the yeah. applicant. The, 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 the specific phrase about film of any sort, there is a security film that I was thinking about using on the large window. And it's something that goes on so that if somebody breaks the glass, the glass doesn't itself shatter so that you can reach through. Being that it's eight foot by eight foot, it would be possible for somebody to break it and walk in. I was anticipating using this security glass, which is a clear, or security film, which would be a clear, non-visible, wouldn't affect the tint color or anything on the glass. So I would ask if the word committee would allow a UV filter to be excluded specifically, but all films would preclude me from using that security film, which I would like to be able to use. I think there's a point. I, I, I'll suggest we use language of colored and or tinted UV film. 
not okay. be used. Colored or tinted about of any sort. Is okay. For I think the, the intent is not to have any right. sort of tint or color. That's exactly. That's fine. If it is, but the clear if it film makes sense security wise. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, any tinted or color UV film to be eliminated or to be um, to be removed from this project. Okay. Uh, and I think we had a second from uh, Vice Chair Wong. Is that correct? Correct. Second film that is colorless, right? No color. Yeah, uh, no colored or tinted uh, UV film is what I got. The window tinted UV film is eliminated. Correct. The door film that he's talking about for security purpose, which to be no color, it should be just a clear film. If I hear that correctly. For Mr. Hollis, right? That 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 would that would be acceptable for for security purpose. So my condition would be just eliminate that UV color tinted film on the window, on the mm -hmm. newly installed window. Got it. Is that clear? Yeah. That's clear, right? Okay. I, I I want to clarify, Mr. Hollis, is is the concern on the window or on the door glass or both that you want to put a security film? Uh, I would speak specifically to the window. Uh, the door is a little bit less of a concern. Um, I just thought of that large window might seem inviting to somebody. So how would that work then? In other words, it it be a colorless film. Yeah, you wouldn't see it at all. It really is just a clear, perfectly clear glass or a perfectly clear film that goes on top of it, like a as clear as saran wrap or something along those lines. Hmm. Okay, I don't know how the rest of the no color or color tint or or anything. I yeah. think there there are probably plenty of windows out in the world that have it and you would never have noticed. I just because it said specifically any film, I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't precluded from using that. All right, if that is the case, then I would I would say that the condition is that you are allowed to put that in, but as soon as that, that film start peeling off or showing kind of bubble, it needs to be re replaced. That would be something I'd want to do anyway, but yes, I understand. Okay, so in other words, if you were to allow that at all, if there's any signs of peeling off or bubbling, uh, since it's a north facing window, you're not going to have that much problem besides sunlight and that kind of thing or heat build up. So it should last for a while, for a long time. But if it does, one of the conditions you need to replace it and repair it. Okay. So that would be my condition of uh, allowing a non color film for security purpose with the condition that any bubbling or separation from the window glass itself, then the, then, then the it's the applicant's responsibility to replace that as soon as possible. Okay, so uh, I believe now we have a, a motion that has been completed. And uh, since there has been a minor change, uh, I think we, uh, Vice Chair Wong, are you second. seconding the motion? Yeah. Okay, so now could we have the roll call? Sure, uh, Committee Member McKay? Yes. Committee Member Lacon? Yes. Committee Member Chang? Yes. Vice Chair Wong? Yes. And Chair Batnich? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. So we now uh, move on to the second item on our agenda, design review case number DRC 21-11, 2010 Huntington Drive. And could we have the staff report, please? Yes, thank you, Chair. The, ob the applicant requests to install signage for a new business known as Mathnasium. The signage program involves one illuminated wall sign facing Huntington Drive and one acrylic ladder sign facing the back parking lot. The project site is next door to the Cal Oak Pharmacy, which is the adjacent tenant of the same building. The proposed sign program is consistent in sign type, location, and material as the adjacent neighbor. Staff is able to make the compatibility finding for the proposed signage with the recommended conditions stated in the staff report. 
Um, those are um, limiting the signage size to approximately half of, of what you're seeing on the plans. And that is um, based on the municipal code requirement. Those are the maximum allowance. Um, the second condition has to do with the lighting of the signage facing Huntington Drive. Staff is recommending that the sign um, lighting type to be backlit, which has been um, the typical um, lighting um, style that this committee has been um, requesting of the applicant in recent months. And finally, staff is um, make, um, wanting to make sure that the sign facing Huntington Drive will be center on the building's facade or, or the business facade, I should say. And um, I understand that the committee also has a desire to impose perhaps um, timing or a timer on signage projects. And um, the committee, um, although it's not provided in the staff report, um, the committee can certainly discuss and um, include that as a recommendation as well. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for Ms. Choi from committee members? I'll, I'll, uh, maybe I can ask staff and if, if you do not have the answer, then we can ask the applicant. It, it's regarding the, the, the black portion where it says the math learning center. I see the letters are seven inches and there is a 12 and a half inch black box. Does that meant to be a box sign in the bottom? Do you know? The applicant, um and the sign contractor are both on the meeting and he yeah. will be able to answer that for you. I think we need to answer, uh, question, uh, ask that because I, I need to know exactly what goes in there. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Cheng, um, so it's like, it's a pan channel box. Um, it's made the same way the channel letters are, LEDs inside with a five inch return uh, with a trim, trim cap around it. Um, so that it's LED illuminated. So the only thing is that will light up where it will be the the math learning center in white and red. Um, it's, it's not typically, it's not a box sign. Um, similar, it's similar to it though. It's like a pan channel logo. It's an acrylic face. So the black, the black portion that you see is acrylic, black acrylic. It's, okay, so it's, it's a white acrylic with a black vinyl. White acrylic with a black, black vinyl. And then uh, so the letters the are- day, During the day, what color do you see? It's going to be black. It's going to be black day and night. So at nighttime, you don't see that. You, you do see a, a black acrylic panel with, with, the, with the letters cut into it. So you see the white letter against a black panel. Yeah, yeah it's, um, it's a white acrylic with black vinyl, with a black vinyl background. And the letters are cut out. So you can see the letters light up only and not the black portion of it. Oh, you cut out the letter, meaning that it is a vinyl. You cut out the vinyl letter yes. on the, okay. On so the white acrylic, you yeah. allow the light to come through. Exactly. But how, do you, how do you get the red mass in there then? We'll use red vinyl on that. On the middle we'll, portion. We'll overlay red vinyl on top of that. I see. Okay. All right. Well, maybe we'll, uh, that's fine. Uh, this is the time with asking staff. So thanks for the information. I'll ask you other things later on. Maybe we'll order the couple of Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any other questions uh, for Ms. Choi from committee members? Um, Ms. Choi, do we have jurisdiction over any other signage on this property? When I was, um, inspecting the property, I noticed that the time for operation was lit up on the front facing front of the property. The times that it's open was had, had was, appeared to be lit up. And I don't think I've seen that. I certainly went around the block a few times and I didn't see it anywhere else on the block. I don't know that I've seen that anywhere in the city. In terms of um, sign that involve moving part or um, alternating colors, um, those are signage that the municipal codes um, speci specifically prohibit. And um, staff will inform the applicant to remove that um, function on his signage. 
we typically do allow a um, business owner to post um, signage that provide direction or information to customer about the business, um, such as an open signs or directional signage um, without counting that particular sign as part of the sign allowance on the business. Um, so the open sign is acceptable, but in this particular case, um, the part that is that has an alternating color or movement, um, that will um, be something that staff will be addressing with the applicants um, in um, tomorrow. I just want to make sure that have, did you notice it, or I just want to make sure that we're talking about the same thing. It's not a it's not a an open closed sign. It's a it appeared to be from what I could tell, and we can discuss it further with the with the applicant. But I wanted to see if this was within the committee's jurisdiction. It appeared to be you know Monday open these hours, Tuesday open these hours, and it appeared to be lit up with red. And uh, I've never seen that before. Um, uh, this particular issue was um, brought to my attention early today by another committee member. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So question, within our sure. to discuss tonight. Okay, uh, committee member Wong, did you have a question? Yeah, I want to make sure committee member McKay is finished with her question first. I can wait. I just want I just want to confirm we can address that tonight. The committee can address that tonight. Is that correct? Yes, if you wish to. Um, and you can certainly impose conditions such as um, the signage on the property shell adhere to all municipal codes requirement and all and any potential violations shall be mitigated immediately. Okay. Yes. It's already up. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so can Ms. Choi, on? can you confirm now the reduced sign footage is from 50, 45 square foot into what now? Um, so the signed the wall sign facing Huntington, Huntington Drive will be reduced to 20 square feet maximum. Okay. And the secondary signage, which is afforded to businesses that have a second exit or entrance open to the customer during business hour would be 50% of what the primary signage is allowed. In this case, it will be 10 square feet. Right. And as a follow-up question, Ms. Choi, um, the only part that is going to be lit up in the Huntington facing side is the blackened area, say, saying the math learning center, not the magnesium, correct? My understanding that the entire signed um, the magnesium name and the black part that say learning center are both um, illuminated. Okay. Uh, I would have to check with the applicant to be sure, but thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions for Ms. Choi? Okay, seeing none, let's, um, uh, is the applicant uh, present? Yes. Would the applicant, okay, would you, um, I know we already heard from you a little bit, but would you like to say anything else about uh, Yes, no, to confirm um, what Peter was talking about, yes, so the, the word mathnasium is also lit up, the whole sign. We were, when we were talking about the black portion, we were just saying that the black part of it is not going to light up. Just just everything that's white and red. Um, and then also to, uh, about the type of signage, uh, about the type of lighting, um, we're proposing front lit channel letters. Right, and I know, I don't know who mentioned about backlit channel letters. Um, hold on, give me one second, sorry. So um, the Cal Oak sign is, is front lit channel letters and we would, we're proposing the same. Um, also the, the store down the street, um, actually it's like a few businesses away, I think it's called Yoshida. That's also front lit, so. Um, us proposing the front lit, we're staying consistent with what's already like uh, been approved on on that street or on that um, within those few businesses. There. So we wanted we wanted to keep it front lit. When you, my, okay, let me ask you a question. When you said front lit, you really mean a uh, LED lighted channel letter, basically. Yes. 
the whole letter is it cut out in a box that raised yeah. up five inches from the wall. Exactly. And where's the raceway then? There's no raceway. It's going to be directly mounted onto the wall. So the, all the electrical run behind the wall? Yes. Uh, okay. Then the, the, the only thing that I, I, is this, this, the, <laughs> the look will be quite different from what we, we've been approving. The way that we, I guess you heard the last application, which is light it behind the letter. So you see a, a silhouette of the, of the sign. In your case, the M is actually light up in white at night. The A is light up in red at night, right? So you see yeah. the actual letter. All right. Yes. And then, okay. Uh, you said you, adding all of that up, you, are you less than 20 square feet? Uh, well, we're going to have to make some adjustments to the the plans that you guys have now. It's it's over. It's way uh, old. Yes, yeah, it's it's so we're going to reduce. We're going to reduce it to meet the requirements. You know, uh, did you do the sign next door? I mean, I, I know it's not, the, the, but but the the next door sign, it just got too many letters on right. the signage. And and yeah, so that one busy, and it's un, it's a it's not successful at all. I know. I, so yeah. that was that was a question I had. It seems like they had a lot of they used a lot of square footage for the Cal Oak sign. What was the reason why they got so much square footage? Well, I don't think so. I, I think what, what they what happened is that when they got reduced by the footage, they try to cut the letter to be a really small letter, trying to say, well, because the letter is so small and they erase letters, they they almost like four or five inches deep. And it's very unfortunate. I have to say that. It's not what we want to see in the city. Right. So I'm, I'm even a little concerned about the way that when you reduce it down to 20 feet with, with 10 letters on, on just the, the name of the business, plus another 20 something letters uh, that are only seven inches, uh, you're going to have a bunch of little tiny letters uh, trying to make that 20 square feet. And, and this may work for your signage, but it may be a little bit too much uh, as far as the next door, late, the next door one is, it basically unfortunate to say that, I have to say it's a disaster. It is too, too many letters trying to fit in that footage. They may just by calculating, uh, see that's just the M alone. That, that looks like a 12 by 12, that's one square foot right there. Just on the, the M. And then the A is 36 inches. That's three feet tall by about a foot and a half. That's four and a half feet right there. So you're never going to make that 20 square feet total. By doing that, if you're keeping your same proportion, you're going to end up with a, a sign that is as busy as next door. Small wow. letters, a lot of them. And, you know, just that, that concerns me. Yeah, well, I've done it before. Uh, I did other mathnasium, so... Um... You know, there's a small. I know that I know what size I can reduce it to get to the 24 feet. Um, but I mean, that's this is the franchise requirements. You know, um, that they have all these letters on there. This is this is their logo. So um, we're gonna have to make it work. What we have, um, we're not proposing anything like the cow oaks. I know that that took up like the whole height, top and bottom. Yeah. So we're not gonna propose anything as busy as that. But um, you know, we could we could also. Um, I feel like I could we can make it work, and um, we do want to keep the front lit um, because you know the the back lit is it's a little bit dimmer and darker and like you know there's gonna be family and children coming uh, to to the, to the classes and uh, you know we want to make it like you know nice and and inviting for them and um, the Yoshida down the street is also front lit so um, you know. Um, I have a question. I mean, just in reference to the the problems that we just discussed in this, you know, made like how how to scale this down. Um, I realize that you may not be able to answer this, but would that problem be solved by eliminating the the secondary the the kind of tagline of math the math learning center because it seems to me that if you didn't have that the math if you just had the mathnasium 
reducing the sign to the square footage would 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 perhaps look less cluttered and more natural. Um, is that something that is ever done in areas where you have to have a very small have a smaller sign than what you are some sometimes used to? Um, not that I know of. I mean, um, we've done a few of them, and you know, we've we've um, included that in all. I would have to check with the franchise. You know, if they would allow them to to take that off. Um, but how about if, so you guys are going, the, the square footage is calculated like just one single box all the way around. Cause how about if we like, I take the math learning center and square, I, I box that out, whatever the square footage is. And then also for the top letters, box that out and see what the square footage is. You know what I mean? Instead of creating just a, a, a rectangle around the whole thing. And is that, is that how you, you guys are calculating the square footage just by like one rectangle around the whole sign? Oh, um, Miss Miss Troy, do you want to answer that? Yeah. So if um, it really depends on the back support of each line. So if I understand you correctly, um, the one of the way to achieve a reduction in the square footage of the sign is to have the mathnasium as one box, and the second tag line will be another box. Um, but we do not take individual letters. Um, and add them up together in that calculation. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, not, not individual letters, but just dividing it into two different um, square foot, like boxing out whatever square footage the mathnasium learning or the, the math learning center is. And then, um, I mean, the A plus, if we could box that out and then whatever the square footage is, is for that. And then the, the math, the rest of the, the M, H, A, the rest of it, box that out, and that'll help us to achieve like square footage that, you know, we wouldn't have to reduce it so much. If I that's think possible. I was just saying that you can't box out a single letter. Did I understand that correctly? Yes, that's that's correct. So um, in this case, for this particular sign proposal, we would consider two lines, the top lines okay. and the bottom line. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that'll help us achieve the square footage that are, you know, more doable. I'm not sure that would really help because even though you have the top line, magnesium, and then the second line, which is the math learning center, even though you call it two boxes, this, the, the save that is going to be saved is it, not going to be substantial. We're talking about really about 20 square foot here. So I would suggest, um, you go back with the franchisor to see if there are other alternatives. I get a sense that you may not have exhausted the options here. And, you know, sometimes less is more because I think too many concepts on the signage is not going to get any attention at all. People just driving by and see a, a clump, uh, a group of things and then move on. They don't know what it is. So I think it's going to be an educated conversation with your team. Okay, I, 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 think it, I think it's not gonna help significantly, but it will help a little bit doing that. And then also um, the franchise, they give us like a scale, like a, um, they, give, they give us a, like a scale of the logo to follow. And the one that we chose here was like the second large, there's a smaller one to scale that we could go with. with and I think the, the A, the, the large A plus is like uh, 29 inches and the total length of the sign is like maybe I think uh, 10, 10 or 12 feet, 10 or 11 feet. And um, the letters are still visible. You know, I mean, they, they did it to scale and they give this for, for all the franchise owners to follow to, to scale out what size sign they could go with. You know what I mean? So choosing the smaller one and also boxing out two, two separate lines, I think that that possibly could give, get us close to that 20 square feet where we need to be. I, I, think, I think we are not here to, to help you design the signage. We have shared with you what we think. Right. So I think that that's what we can do tonight. Yeah, I just have um, one question because on, on the documents that you gave us with the mock-ups, um, it says non-illuminated acrylic letters. Mm -hmm. So, I think you said that they are illuminated. 
Um, that's for the back signs. The one in the back alley. Oh, uh, I see. Yes, 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 yes of course. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so the first page is front lit and the right. difficult. Thank you. <laughs> I have, a, I have a couple more questions I think, before you come back to share with us because I want to make sure your, your plans are consistent. Your, your, um, your explanation on top says it's a one inch black trim cap. And then down below you are using a three quarter inch trim cap. So do you know exactly how that letter is built? Is it, is it one inch or three quarters? Yeah, it should be one inch. It's just a typo. It should be one inch. Yeah. So, so what I what I want to make sure is that when you go back, if you're gonna come back to us after you get the twenty square feet worked out, uh, that should be consistent, and it would be uh, so that we know exactly what we're getting. And you already checked that you can get the electrical work behind the wall, right? Yeah. Yes. Because I don't want you to come back later and put that in another big raceway. My mm -hmm. the exterior wall and then the letters sit in front of it, then then the whole thing will fall apart. Oh, the uh, the physical therapy and the um, the cow oaks they're directly mounted onto the wall, so there shouldn't be no problem with that. I don't I don't think that physical therapy was lit. Is that correct? That the old sign was not lit. I don't believe. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. There it was channel letters. I assume they were lit, but. The I'm just hoping that you know try to copy that sign next door. It, it's so it's so unfortunate when we see that. As a matter of fact, in the back, they also use about four to five inches raised letter in the back, which I don't think that was lit. But they you, you see those big standing letters in the back, which I think will be a a failing. Um, proposal. And yours, you're just going to cut out a, what is the thickness of your acrylic when you mount it on the wall? What is uh, it? Three, that six, three sixteen. Huh? Three sixteen. Yeah, it's, it's like three flat acrylic. Yeah. How, how is that? You're going to glue it on the wall? Mm -hmm. How is that going to work? Just glue? The silicone. And three sixteen is really thin. That, and so, uh, have you mounted before though? Because the wall surface is really rough. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have, yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure that you, you have done it and it works. It's not as what your plan shows is a perfectly flat wall that you can have kind of 316 inch of acrylic and it, and it fit in perfectly. The wall itself may be off more than 316. So you're going to have some difficulty to mount that, to mount it onto a rough wall and make sure it looks right. I just, no, I just, okay. Okay. Are there any other Can questions for the applicant? I have one. Yes. Uh, will the lights for the main uh, word mathnasium, the, it's outlined in black, but the main letter is white. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, how will that show up? Um, if, if let's say, for instance, we were um, to um, uh, suggest the backlit, would the letters still stay stay white? No. Well, and what color? Um, I'm worried about the light. What light are we going to see? The white. Yeah, it, it'll light up white like a white halo. In the night, it'll just look like a dark shadow with a white halo around the letter. If it was backlit, you would not use white anymore. We could still use white. Like in the daytime, the letter could still be white. I'm not, you would. My internet is unstable. Yeah, okay. you're, you're breaking up. I can hear I'm you. I'm having the, trouble with my reception. In the daytime. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. But at night, if. Sorry, I'm, I'm having trouble here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, fix my connection. Go ahead. Okay, I think she's gonna 
try to ask her question again uh, when she maybe has a better connection. Are there any other questions from other committee members for the applicant? I think it freed up, uh, Chair. Oh, no, um, she's cutting off. No, maybe not. Okay, sorry. I do have a question if while we're waiting yeah. for committee member Lacon to log back on. Um, I, I just want to make sure that the applicant or the applicant's representative, Mr. Estrada, that you understand what was discussed previously with um, Ms. Choi in the staff discussion um, that that sign in the front for the times of operation is not supposed to be lit. Did, did, was that clear? Um, no, can you repeat that or can you clarify that again? The point that I made when I was, when we were having discussion with staff and, and, and Ms. Choi, I thought indicated that this would maybe been discussed with, with uh, the applicant as well you currently have a sign in the front that ha lists the hours of operation by day, which is lit up. Um, and I don't think that that is, is, uh, is per city code. And I, did, did you, un did you understand that? Yeah, I wasn't, I, I understand that. I wasn't aware that there was a sign there uh, that was lit up with the hours of what you're talking about, but I, I do I get what you're saying, but yeah. That's how it had appeared to me when I was at the property this morning. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I never noticed that. Okay. Well, apparently I and another committee member noticed it. And um, I, I, I think that, you know, if we're, if, if we're headed, like, I think we are to a continuance that that has to be addressed, you know, immediately. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, the business owner, I, he's on the call right here too. I mean, he's on the zoom meeting. He, so um, he's probably aware of that. Hello. Hi, this is Mark Uten. I'm the uh, business owner. Hi, are you able to put your camera on? Uh, I'm gonna try. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Yeah, um, did you wanna address um, the- um, And any kind of open sign that we have there in front and if it's lit, then I'm gonna have my manager remove it. Um, uh, we, we did not know that it was against uh, um, city code. So th that, that would not be a problem for us to, to remove that sign. Okay. And uh, just to clarify, it's the, it, it's the fact that the open sign is lit. It's not necessarily the hours. We can have hours that are lit, but just not the, the part that says open or yeah. is, uh, is any, anything yeah. that is lit. No, I, I've never seen a sign lit like that in any way, shape or form. I, I'll, I'll defer to Ms. Choi, but, but it's not about the open. It's, it's the, the, the sign that I saw said Monday and the hours of operation and there were red dots that were lit up by day. And I've never seen a sign like that in, in San Marino, in my recollection, in my- You know what, there, 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 it might just be, um, because we just put that in very recently, or at least I bought it for the manager to put up. And it's possible that the hours just aren't um, there. So if it, if it says Monday and it just has the, the colons without the, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So, so someone is showing someone, it's something like that, that uh, Miss Lacon is, is showing. So it's, uh, it's like an open sign with, with the days and the hours. Well, are you suggesting that once the hours are determined that it's not going to be lit up? It's, I don't think it's, Ms. Choi, I don't think it's supposed to be lit up. Isn't that correct? Um, that, that will be correct. Um, Mr. Yuton, if you can simply, um, when you do have the operating hours determined, um, mm -hmm. you can certainly in, um, input those hours. However, the sign itself should not be illuminated. Got it. Okay, no problem. Then uh, we'll, we will replace the sign with with something that is not illuminated. Or if you can turn off the lighting option, that's another way to- Yeah, I don't think, I, I, I think the only way that it works is, is uh, for it to light up with the hours. So we can definitely uh, remove that and replace it with something that is uh, not, not illuminated. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Are there any other questions? Um, Committee Member Lacon, are you able to ask your question now? I'm not sure if she's on. Um, I 
I'm on. I am. Um, I um, I had I had some questions. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. No, I don't, it's not going through. Um, I, okay. I had um, I had questions about the style of this. Uh, this. Oh, it was the it was the color. Um, if if it was changed to backlit, would the main letter still be white? They they can be. They they could. They can be or they will be. Um, um, it, well, they, I haven't. That's I haven't. I haven't considered changing it to backlit. That's why. So I, I, I mean, they could be, but we. I haven't talked right. to Mark or the franchise about it, about it but being changed it, to backlit. But wasn't it backlit in these in the report from um, city staff from Miss Choi or it was Miss Choi? Was it wasn't that recommended? Yeah, it was rec have it recommended. Backlit? Yeah, I would recommend. I just took it as a recommendation, but not like a, a, oh, okay. a, a must. Um, you know, because the Yoshida down the street, I know that sign just got put up, and that one's front lit. It's really bright too. Well, that uh, that was that used to be much smaller and and more subtle. Um, and there was a period of time that um, we weren't brought the signs for purview, and um. I think that the, the Yoshida sign is something that um, most of the residents that I know are not very fond of. I think most people prefer the smaller sign. So are there any other questions for the applicant or applicant's representative? If I may just make, I just want to make one more uh, comment to the applicant and, and his representative. Uh, the, it's a desire of the city uh, not to use your uh, signage for advertising purpose. I think the signage is for more wayfinding and direction though. So people will see it and they know you're there. But the, the whole notion of having uh, as, as big a sign as possible and as bright a sign as possible and run it to uh, around the clock, the whole evening and whole midnight uh, is not the desire of the city. So especially for, for something like the, your, your type of business, uh, people look you up and they'll come and they will be able to find you. And during early evening hours, it gets dark early, that they can still see where you are and pick up the, the, the kids. Uh, so that's the whole intention. So if there is a, if it is a franchise, uh, if they, I'm sure they provide different options because there are similar cities that have the same uh, ideas of signage. So uh, San Marino uh, want to uphold that that desire of having the the signage uh, as small and as uh, as a um, um, as not obvious as possible. It's not it's against advertising purpose as possible. So with that said, I'll, I'll let uh, John, you go back and, and uh, work with their approved signage uh, uh, or, or, or the other options. Uh, if they do allow or they do have successful backlit signs that will do the same thing, consider those. It will probably make it a lot easier to approve considering that you only got about 20 square feet total in the front uh, and you need to work with that so that it come out uh, come out to to serve your purpose and also can get the approval easier. I just want to make sure that you understand that and um, that will help you uh, when you come back next time to be more successful. You got to visit your time you, you, you got the idea right? Yeah, I, I definitely do, and um, yeah, the, the 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 design was was not meant for um, advertising purposes, and and I totally understand um, the the desires of the city and the committee. So um, uh, I I will talk to the franchisor to see if we can uh, modify the design. So one option is to remove the the math learning center um, second um, the bottom portion. And uh, another option is to um, 
change it from a front lit to a back lit. Correct. Okay. I, I, I think the, the first option, uh, I, I have seen other mathnasium centers where they don't have that bottom portion. So I think that would be uh, easily approved as, as long as they haven't changed their, their rules on that. Um, but the back lid, I don't think I've ever seen uh, that. So, but it, but I'm willing to, to ask. Okay. Uh, to see. Right. And um, maybe, maybe this is a question I can have for John in, you know, maybe not during this meeting, but maybe we can make the front lit signs somehow dimmer so that it's not uh, very bright for the, for, for, for the residents. That, that would help. Definitely. Thank you. You got the idea. That's, that's I do. Yes, definitely. So uh, with the, with, just to add to that, so um, if it has to be front lit and we, we make it dimmer, so it's not so bright, would you, would you guys could take that in consideration just so that we're not wasting any time? You know what I mean? Cause I mean, if we, I just, if it's possible, because if it's not possible, then then we'll, you know what I mean. Yeah, well, I, 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 for me personally, if you take out the math learning center and just have, uh, just just the name of the business, and even with the A plus in red, I think that's approvable. That's something that I I've seen them uh, work workable. And also, if you dim the lights to be uh, not not a, a a white bright white light. Uh, if you can dim that down a little bit to more of a warm tone, uh, that will that work because it only work during the late night, uh, the the early evening hours. During the day, you don't see, you don't need that lit anyway. Mm -hmm. You can see it, right? So yeah. only at the evening hour from maybe four thirty to about eight nine o'clock, and that's it. So that's pretty much what that hours would be like. Exactly. And uh, just to add to the, uh, the physical therapy place that was there prior, uh, their sign was lit and they still have the timer box inside the unit. So we can uh, just hook up our sign to that timer and we'll follow any uh, guidelines that the city has in terms of keeping the, the sign lit only on uh, during certain hours. Uh, yeah, there will be some condition on that, but I, I don't know whether you want to tie in with their sign so that they all come off the same time or come off the same time. But oh, no, 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 it, 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 it's not, it's not tied in with the, with the pharmacy. It was tied. It's, it's a, uh, it's an existing timer that was there from the prior uh, business. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. So that will be part of the condition when we look at your final submission and then we'll, 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 we'll look at your operating hours and come up with something that, that is workable for you and for the citizens. Great. Okay. Okay. I know we've already been having some s sort of discussion um, amongst ourselves and with the applicant kind of at the same time, but uh, I would like to move on to committee member discussion and perhaps we can just move through this um, quickly. It seems obvious that this is uh, going to be, or, or it is my sense from listening to all of you that this is going to be uh, a, a continued, but let's just uh, briefly go through uh, one by one. Um, uh, committee member Lacon. I think the, the, it's frozen again, so. Oh, okay, if her screen is frozen. Oh, yes, committee member Lacon, are you able am I, to? Am I on? Okay. Okay, now. I'm on, okay. I, 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 uh, I could support a continuance. I um, agree with what we've been discussing um, as far as the size, obviously. Um, I, I think it's um, it's much too large, uh, but I really would like the applicant to, um, to try to, um, to modify the design so that it's a little more um, compatible with the um, not so much. I would love it to be more compatible with the building style, which was more Art Deco. Uh, but the the I've seen signs for Mathnasium at other locations, La Cunata. I've looked at other ones throughout. Um, one in Tustin is uh, a one on a Spanish building that's very nice. I saw another picture where they had a back one that was backlit. 
I've seen different size signs and um, I'm hoping that the franchise is amenable to um, cities that have um, or you know or have design guidelines that we're trying to elevate the aesthetics. So um, I think that something that comes back that's less busy, less large, uh, backlit, um, and and um, I would prefer that little tagline removed also if that was an option. Um, I think that the sign is also the location is very high, and I don't um, I don't notice a pharmacy sign. It's I mean I notice it because it's uh, a bunch of green and blue, but I don't really know what it says, to be honest. I've never been able to read what that, or pay attention to that sign. And I don't know what it says. And I use that pharmacy and I don't pay attention to it. I think that, that it's a very high area. And I think people that go by in their cars look lower. And I think that they, they height where they have um, uh, the flu shot signs and the signs on the to the right at the building on the right that has the gym and fresh gourmet, that I love is much more. Um, I think we'll know. Um, I don't know yet, uh, modified in all those ways that I have said. Um, and then as far as the back sign, the back sign I would think it should be way smaller. Um, both, both, both because of specific location, both signs are very visible from the residential area. And that's something that we really try to um, uh, be careful not to impose on the residential streets. Um, the back is very visible to the homes on Bedford. And then the one on the front is very visible to the um, crossing Huntington to that those houses on Bedford. So I, um, the back sign, I would like it to be much lower and closer to where the entrance will be so that it will give you the direction as to where to enter the building. Okay. Uh, I think that would be helpful. Them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah, um, the, um, oh gosh, I have the cookie. Oh. The, he happened to be coming down and I was like, oh yeah, that's right, it's 8.15. Oh, um, can we you have go look at that in the other room? Okay, um, Vice Chair Wong. Thank you. Yeah, um, I want to say that less is more. So if the tech line is gone, it would help. But I would not say it is an either or, meaning either a front lid or the tech line is gone. Because uh, I want the applicant to understand that the other examples they have seen around town is predated. Um, this committee and there was history behind it. So that's why we are trying to move towards a more sub subdued, subtle pathfinding and uh, a little bit even elegant kind of signage for the city. <clears throat> so uh, I encourage you to look into what's a, a, agreeable by the franchise store and really use your imagination a little bit. Um, I think that would help a lot. And I mean, if, if it's a good you know, facility, it's word of mouth. People would come to you, parents would come to you with the kids. Even you have the whole facade with the signage, people may not come if it's not a good uh, you know, uh, experience. So, so don't, don't bet too much on the signage area per se. So yeah, please follow the department as a whole. I would just uh, advise you at the back, um, I just don't want it to be flimsy. I know there's a very thin sheet of vinyl or acrylic or whatever, but I don't want it to be damaged, fall down, not, not sturdy because it's kids can be coming out. So, so please make sure in your next presentation, give us the assurance of that. And uh, I would love to see examples of how signages of this brand is in reality from other locations, day and night, whatever kind of uh, lighting you want to recommend, backlit, of front lighting so we as a committee know how exactly is that so we don't have to you know vote by imagination i think that would help a long way for you guys i can support a continuous thank you thank you um committee member mckay thank you i'm not going to reiterate what everybody's been saying i agree with my fellow committee members 
um, I, I, I sense that the uh, applicant and the applicant's representative are, you know, are really taking our comments to heart and I could support a continuance if they are uh, wanting to get this approved at the next um, continued uh, hearing date, then the lighting size and design considerations and concerns that we've raised need to be addressed specifically. And I, I trust that you're uh, listening in good faith. And um, so I could support a continuance tonight. And, and uh, um, um, you know, in addition, some of the recent comments about the size uh, and, and issues with the back sign and then the lit sign on the front, all of these need to be addressed so that we can comprehensively look at this. So we know that our concerns were addressed specifically and that you're set up for approval for the next hearing date. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, committee member Cheng. Thank you. Yeah, I actually, I, I Googled the company name and at least about 30, 35 pictures came up from all different locations. And uh, uh, some are successful, some are not. Interesting enough, it, it, it truly is less is more. The, the simple clean ones appears to be the one that just have either, uh, there was one looks like it's in a mall and has a backlit letter. It looks really attractive. I suggest the yes. applicant and, or the, uh, the uh, representative look it up in the, in the, in the Google and, and check Look at all of those. You 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 heard what we were talking about, and it 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 a lot of them are approvable. A few of them are just way too busy. The more they have, the worse it gets. So uh, you can check it out by yourself. But I I am uh, prepared to go in continuance and hope they will spend some time do the homework, come back with the correct and a approvable solution for us. So everybody will be happy then. Thank you. Um, committee member, Tony, uh, alternate committee member, Tony Chow. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll keep it short. I mean, I, I'll reiterate what all the other committee members said. And then also I support it for a continuance. Um, it seems like, you know, the applicant has good understanding now with all the feedback that you're getting. Um, so we all want to obviously get this business up and running with the, with the signage. So hopefully next time you come um, and take all these comments to heart and hopefully it'll be a quick discussion at that time. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, I echo what the other com uh, committee members have said. You know, we're not here to tell you, oh, definitely redu reduce the, you know, eliminate the tagline and we will approve. We can't tell you exactly what we'll approve until we see it in front of us, but uh, you do. You did seem to be listening uh, and taking what we said to heart. Um, as a, as Vice Chair Wong said, it's kind of a combination of different things. Like if you're going with the back backlighting, it might be um, you might be able to be a little bit busier on the sign. Otherwise, uh, because that lighting isn't going to be so strong and so um, kind of in your face. Uh, on the other hand, if you did something like reducing the tagline, you know, it might uh, it might result in a cleaner, uh, more simple, more elegant appearance just by doing that. We're not here to tell you what to do exactly. I will say that I looked, uh, I also Googled <laughs> um, uh, mathnasium signs after committee member Lacon mentioned Tustin. Um, you know, that certainly had a more of a look that I would expect to find um, in, in, in San Marino compared to a lot of the other um, signs that, um, that I see um, just Googling mathnasium signs in different places. So uh, just keep those things in mind, the more natural the look, perhaps metallic letterings that are backlit rather than, you know, brightly lit channel lettering that have a plasticky acrylic kind of look to it is, you know, kind of more what we're looking at, more of an elegant look, more of a subtle look. Um, but you seemed to understand what we were saying and it seems that you will be considering that and perhaps even changing the design, you know, from these examples of that were, that were brought up um, based on what we're saying. So uh, it, with that, I will ask for a motion. I move to continue DRC case number 21-11. A second motion. 
Kathleen, could we have the roll call, please? Uh, committee member uh, McKay? Yes. Committee member Lacon? Yes. Committee member Chang? Yes. Vice Chair Wong? Yes. And Chair Batnich? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. We now move on to design review case number DRC 21-08-1045 Rosalind Road. And um, I'm, I'm sure we all read the staff report that uh, this particular um, item uh, the staff is recommending us to continue, but I will just formally ask for the staff uh, report on that before I ask for a motion to continue. Um, is thank you, Chair. Sure? Um, briefly, yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, briefly, just to sum up um, the memo that staff issued to the committee members, um, staff found um, numerous errors on the plans submitted to staff um, the Thursday night prior to Friday when I have to um, produce the staff report to you. Um, the timing was uh, fairly poor and I was not able to get an updated plans from the ARP, um, applicant. So for that reason, I am requesting that the committee continue the hearing to the March 17th meeting, which is the next um, design review hearing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so is it appropriate, Ms. Choi, if I just ask for a motion in this case, or do I have to go through the, um, the, the usual procedure of asking for the committee president? The because staff motion? did not produce a staff report, um, you, you can certainly ask for a motion and we can just um, move on to the next item. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, could I have a motion, please? Uh, Chair, if I may, if, may, can, may I ask a question to staff? I, yes, I, I, yes. Just, I just want to, uh, to to make sure when the plan comes back next time that it is something that we can work on. Uh, maybe uh, staff, um, Ms. Choi, if I may ask you, uh, do they ha now have an architect on this project now for the plans? The, the, the plan that you received which we said was inconsistent and not ready, but I, I want to make sure that the the uh, this is a the same application we heard before uh, with the white truck and all of that. But I I want to make sure that the applicant because uh, I I think they are on the uh, on the phone right now. But I want to make sure that whatever uh, plan they come in, it is it is something that this committee is is ready to be able to look at and work with and, and act on it rather than coming back with the same set of plan that we had before. Uh, were you able to shed some light with us? Yes, um, committee member Cheng, to answer your question. Um, the first application that came before the committee, which um, the committee denied at the first hearing, um, the property owner is um, continue, continuing to work with the architect that prepared the original plans for this committee. Um, so to answer your question, no, he has not brought on um, any other design team um, as suggested by the committee last time. I see, all right. Well, I, I just I just want to to, to make uh, make this comment. I know we're not gonna act on it, but I, but I think if they did not take our suggestion and or uh, uh, comments to heart, and with the same team coming back with the same issue, I don't see how we, we got so, so many questions last time. And, and then it, it, based on what you have just reported that uh, there's so many discrepancies at this time, uh, there's no, no sense to bring it back to this committee if they are not ready. I, I, I guess I just have to say that even though the neighbors wanted to make sure get it done, make sure to get it done correctly. Uh, I think the neighbors, uh, a few neighbors actually, I, I, in fact, uh, had voiced a concern uh, to myself about how are we gonna deal with this particular application. So I just wanna make sure that uh, you can relate to the applicant and or the, the their representative that uh, what the, this body would expect to see when they come back in March. That's, I guess that's my, 
my my best comment and suggestions I can to help this application. Thank you, um, um, committee member, to answer your question earlier, um, the applicant um, is not on the call tonight, um, and I will relay the message to the applicant tomorrow. Oh, the applicant is on the call. Okay, good. All right, good. Mr. Choi, along the line, I just want to be sure that you are not proposing to guarantee the case to be in this March 17 meeting unless all the material you receive been checked and consistent and is ready for discussion by this committee and be heard by the public. Um, so staff's recommendation is to bring the project back on March 17th, which is two weeks from today. Um, and that was my instruction to the applicant to provide plans to me um, one week from today. So that way, at least I have one week to review the plans um, and provide comments. Um, if the committee feels that um, you want to continue to a future date, you can certainly do that as well. Uh, I want to clarify my thought is that if the department <clears throat> in, a, <clears throat> in a week's time does receive all the information and uh, decide that it is ready for this committee to consider and for the public to hear the case, then of course, please bring it on. But I'm saying if there's still a lot of outstanding issues, a lot of holes, I don't want anybody to feel obliged to that March 17 day because we are not going to waste time on anything that is not ready. Okay. Okay. So I, I'm just going on myself, but I want to be sure the committee is of the same thought because it is always going to take a lot of time to go through each case and it is going to also taking a, a, a slot from other applicants as well that's willing to be heard. I understand. Um, in, in which case, um, Vice Chair, um, when it comes time to provide a motion, um, you may want to consider continuing the project to a future date. That way the committee is not committed to a set date. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, okay thank you. Are there um, any other questions for staff about this project? Okay, seeing none, then I will um, ask for a motion. I'll move to continue DRC case number 21-08 to a future date to be determined appropriate by the department. I second the motion. Okay, could we have the roll call? Committee Member McKay? Yes. Committee Member Lacon? Yes. Committee Member Chang? Yes. Vice Chair Wong? Yes. And Chair Batnich? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. We now move on to design review case, number, the last item on our agenda, which is to design review case number DRC 21 dash 05, 2765 Lorraine Road. Uh, could we have the staff report, please? Sure. Uh, design review case number DRC 21-05 is a request to install a Decker Shake XD steel roofing material in the antique chestnut color on an existing two-story home uh, and a detached garage at 2765 Lorraine Road. Uh, this material and color has been previously approved at 2225 Hommet Road. However, it has not yet been installed. Uh, I was asked by uh, several committee members to have um, a list of other homes that this material has been approved on. Uh, 2225 Hommet Road is the only one I was able to find. There are several other homes at other locations that do, do use steel roofing material. However, it is a different manufacturer. Uh, those are located at 671 Winston Avenue, uh, 1615 Waverly Road, 2695 Devonport Road, uh, and 2240 Roanoke Road. Uh, staff recommends uh, continuance of, of this request to give the applicant additional time to consider alternative materials uh, to be more compatible with the neighborhood. That concludes staff's presentation. Okay, thank you. Are there any uh, questions for Mr. Cervantes from committee members? Okay, seeing none, uh, is the applicant or applicant's representative here? Uh, 
I Hi, I'm, uh, I'm David Ling. I'm the representative for uh, uh, my mom's residence in, in San Marino. And on the line too is uh, Robert Lansford, the uh, roofing contractor. So we're happy to uh, okay. talk to you about this. Uh, Robert, do you want to speak first or? Sure. Yeah, if you can just, if you would like to give a very brief present presentation, please go ahead. Yeah, this is the DecoraShake XD. Uh, we actually did finish the one on home it uh, that's completed. Uh, it should have been signed off today. We finished it on Monday. Uh, that was for the Pinnacle Gray. This is actually for the Chestnut. Um, we have about 40 of these roofs in Arcadia in the Highland Oaks area, Rancho Santa Anita, the village. They're all the homeowners associations. Um, it's probably the best steel product on the market. It's applied with screws, no exposed fasteners. Um, I think it will be very compatible with this area because there's so much differentiation, differentiate, <laughs> oh, forget it. Anyway, there's so many different types of roofs in this area. Uh, you have cedar light across the street. You have Boral Shake, which is next to that. Three houses down, you have composition asphalt. On the other side, on the uh, north side, you have wood shake, cedar light, um, composition asphalt. So there's a wide variety of different, different materials in the area. I think it will be compatible. Okay, thank you. Um, is I wasn't quite sure if the uh, Mr. Ling, if you also wanted to say something. Yeah, actually, uh, on behalf of my mom, uh, who's not able to attend, uh, again, she's you know we've been residents of San Marino for over forty years, and she's lived in this house for about thirty nine of that. And you know we currently have a wood shake roof that's totally dilapidated, it's leaking. So we have a strong urgency to replace it. And we've looked at the nine types of pre-approved lists, uh, uh, roof types on your list. And you know we're very concerned. And I'm I'm a landscape architect, so I'm very well aware of compatibility with design guidelines. So I'm sensitive to that as well. And I know, you know, growing up in San Marino, that's, that's a huge deal. So I think that, you know, my, my mom's main concern is that, you know, we have this huge uh, liquid amber tree on the front and they drop those little spiky balls and the leaves every year. It's a beautiful tree, but, you know, there's a lot of uh, litter on the roof. And, and one thing about, you know, the simulated uh, wood shake roof such as the Boreal and the Cedar Light and Da Vinci, they, they tend to be very fragile. I mean, in the roofing industry, those concrete tiles are called, you know, potato chips because they break so often. So with the constant maintenance on the roof because of the tree, people, the gardeners will have to climb on top. So having anything like that would be, you know, uh, damaging to, to the concrete product. So that's why and, and this uh, Decra uh, Shake XD is actually a more expensive product than the, uh, than the concrete shake. So we were, you know, because of this uh, walkability concern and also the non-combustible, uh, uh, fire combustible concern, you know, my mom was willing to pay more and the premium to have this, uh, this top of the line metal product, which is, you know, very, it's a thick rustic hand split wood shake look. So it's, we feel it's very compatible with the neighborhood. So we hope that you would consider, especially with the uh, over 20 roofs, metal roofs that uh, Mr. Lansford had installed in the city of San Marino. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any other, are there any questions for the uh, applicant uh, or applicant's representative from committee members? Uh, I have one for Mr. Lansford. Um, you have presented to the committee in the past a few times and recently you are proposing the DECRA brand. So my question to you is, would that be the brand going forward, meaning the other brand would not be recommended for the most part? I just want to see what is your professional judgment of different uh, steel uh, core uh, tile brands? Uh. 
Well, I think this one looks a little bit better. So, you know, the uphill battle we've been having with the uh, the Tilcor, I think this has a better opportunity to be more more approved. So you're saying Tilcor may be of a lesser desirable, uh, in your opinion, for the city going forward? Uh, the city's viewpoint, I think that they'll prefer more of the Decker Shake XD. As far as homeowners, it just varies homeowner to homeowner, to be quite honest with you. Remind me, is the home at uh, location also XD product? To which one? The home at location that yes, you just sir. finished. Yeah, that's that, that's okay. the Shake XD. Yep. Okay. Uh, that's a that's the pinnacle gray. Got this it. is uh, the chestnut, which is brown. I thought you mentioned the um, Decra or the Tilcor is actually cheaper than other materials, but the Tilcor the Tilcor the Tilcor is going to be cheaper. Uh, but not the Decorous Shake XD. Decorous Shake XD is a plywood with plywood. The Tilcor is not. And the price of plywood right now is about $40 a sheet. Sorry, what do you mean by plywood? Uh, that's the substrate that's got to go underneath it, just like you would have to have it for a, a cement tile roof. Okay. That's a four, four by eight panels, o, OSB, Orient Strata Board, or plywood. That has right. to go down as a decking. Right. But the material itself is stone coated. Yes, sir. Yeah, the material is actually put apply with screws. Uh, XD just means no exposed fasteners, okay. where the till core is applied to a batten. So there's a batten that goes on top. It's like a roof on top of a roof. That's why uh, it's a little bit cheaper. This one has to go down with the plywood, just like a cement roof would. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Chair, so I, I, oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Is that for me? It's okay. I am just want to ask uh, the, the roofer the same uh, information, pretty much. Uh, so if I understand correctly, you said you, you have to remove the existing roof uh, and, and unless there is a uh, plywood um, sub roof there, you need to put in the plywood. And then the this uh, steel material goes on top uh, can, can, below the steel material, do you have the waterproofing first? How does it? Can, yes, sir. It's it's yes. It'll go down. So you have your plywood deck. You have your your tech shield, whatever you'd like to put on it. Your synthetic underlayment, thirty pound peel and stick. So you have an underlayment that goes on top, and then you have it applied to through the underlayment to the decking. I see. And then this go on top. And then how is that being fastened to the? Conductor? With with four screws. Four screws per panel. Oh, so screw on. Yes. They overlap each other. And you yes, said- Yes, sir, the, 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 yes, the, the interlock. And how is that? Uh, as I remember, the, the home at uh, home, wasn't it the one that has the peacock problem? Wasn't it the one that- did I Yes, get sir. It? Yes, sir. They, yeah, they, the peacock problem. Yeah, there were quite a bit of them over there at the time. One of them tried that there because they feel that it is, that will help them. So how did, how did that turn out? How did it come up? We just finished it on Monday, but uh, the, there were peacocks around the, the block when the week, the week we were working. <laughs> but does it look good? Basically. I think it looks good. I think it looks good. Uh, it's it's hard to see. It's two stories. Did you bring us a picture? No, I did not. I'm sorry. I, I, I like to go see, honestly. We were, we were using that one as a test case for this yeah. because I remember we had a long discussion about should we allow that to happen and this particular owner insists on doing it because of the peacock problem. Yes. So we said, That's Great, correct. let's do that I, and then we'd like to see it. So You should have the two pictures that I brought though of this product in Chestnut. I, I brought it for that product, the last meeting. Well, we, I want to see the one that's it's, it's, it's installed in San Marino and see how that looks. So I'll, I'll okay. go to to take a look at it. Sure. I, I'm sorry, I have a question. I, I, I understood from staff that it has not yet been installed on Hamid. No, it's uh, been installed. There, yeah, I had gotten out there last week uh, when the staff report was drafted. And at that time it, it had not been, I looked at the inspections and there hadn't been any. So I, from that, I deduced that there that it hadn't been installed, but I haven't gone out there this week to look. Oh, 
Yeah, I also was uh, told in advance by staff that it had not yet been installed. And therefore, although I did drive by, I, you know, as you said, it's a little bit hard to see. And I just assumed that what I was told was correct, that it hadn't indeed been, been installed. So to me, this is still a test case that we haven't been able to really evaluate yet because, because of that. Um, I'm also wondering about a couple of other things. Is, these are more questions, but um, you know, these kinds of roofs, um, I've heard a little bit here and there just from doing a little research on this that, you know, look, every roofing type has its pluses and minuses. And the minus with this one seems to be that the little stone granules seem to wear off. Um, some of that is a bit expected and some of it is, seems like sometimes it's more than expected and that, that can be um, an issue. And for that reason, it's not guaranteed forever because of course the elements and the sun and, and all of that kind of wears down on these grains of stone that cover the, the roof. So I'm just wondering about the, the peacocks, you know, they, they really like to go and kind of, um, they like to try to kind of peck on roofing and try to get down to, to see something. And I'm just wondering if that's going to be an issue on that property, but um, that is not really relevant to this property uh, at hand. Um, and I'm also wondering about the, um, just, you know, in terms of this roofing material, um, from what I understand, it is more walkable than tile, but still not exactly walkable. <laughs> uh, because from what I understand, it, you, you can only walk on a certain part of this tile. Um, the directions for home, homeowners who have this, um, this type of shake actually show you a diagram where you're only supposed to put on your foot on the bottom of each shake and not in the middle or top in order to reduce the chance of damaging the shake. So I, I just wanna point out that there is some walkability, but perhaps not, perhaps not the type of walkability that is sometimes implied. If you want to respond to this or address any of this, um, you know, that's fine. Sure, uh, as far as the granules going down, they're uh, not put down like uh, asphalt composition. Composition typically lasts about 27 to 30 years. They're basically put down with gasoline. Uh, this is an, an enamel stone that's baked on. So a completely different process. Um, they do to come with a 20 year no fade warranty, which concrete tile doesn't. And as far as walkability, there's no comparison between walking on this and the concrete tile. You can't walk on concrete tile at all unless it's standard weight. Uh, with this product, you are correct. From the front to the middle is where you do your walking. Um, but with the Shake XD, you can pretty much walk on anywhere on it. Um, it's probably the most popular product put down with uh, solar, just for the walkability on it. But in comparison add, to like- Pardon me if I can. Um, I'm the, sorry, uh, um, we're not in public comment. Okay. At the moment, but I will, I will, I, I assume that you are not, you are here for public comment and you are not part of the applicants or applicants Correct. I have no financial or other eyes or relationship <laughs> interest in, in this. Okay, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll get to you soon. Um, so, um, are there any uh, other questions for the? Yeah, I wonder has Mr. Ling or any member of the family checked out the project at home at or met with the homeowner there and see how they think about it before, or, or maybe other cities or projects of uh, Mr. Landforce to have the leap of confidence on a steel product? No, I actually have not spoken to uh, the homeowner. Uh, on Hobbit, but uh, I know in speaking uh, quite at length with Mr. Lansford over the past half a year, as we went through different reiterations, I even <laughs> had, uh, communicated with uh, Ms. Choi on, on this uh, issue many months ago. 
And we went back and forth on different products. And I think through the method of elimination, you know, and addressing my mother's concern. And, uh, you know, I think we, we went on this, uh, this is kind of like the last resort of, of options for her. So uh, based on, you know, the samples that I've seen personally and on the website of the finished projects from Mr. Lansford, uh, we feel pretty confident that um, this is the choice for us, despite of, you know, all the uh, potential negative aspects that uh, you guys are concerned about with aesthetics, but we are pretty confident that it will be uh, compatible with the neighborhood. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yes, I can remember that time. Uh, could you tell me, um, I, I, was, um, I was speaking with um, some repairmen about going on a roof of a um, composition shingle house that we have in my family in Pasadena. And I asked a um, chimney sweep and a rooter person, don't ask to go onto the ceiling, onto the roof of the house. and. They told me that um, if it was a steel shingle, they would not be able to go on the roof because of liability of, of damaging the roof and that they would not go on it. Um, and I don't know if that, is that a problem with um, the product that you've come across with? Is it something that needs to be um, considered for the homeowner that um, some different um, workers won't, won't, won't be able to I'm sorry, committee member Lacon, we just kind of lost the last because of the words. Okay. I, I also asked the roof the roof a roofing company and they said that it, it you have to be very careful when you walk that they do dent. Um, is that something that you found um, with the roofs you that, found? That's what I had read as well. And in speaking to one person, they mentioned the same thing to me. There's there's several steel products out there um, and ones that are not corrugated will dent. Uh, there were three manufacturers, both of all, actually all three of them in Southern California, Metro, Gerard and Steel Rock that were bought out by Boral. That is a non-corrugated product. Uh, both Tilcor and Decra are corrugated. So they're about 50% stronger. Um, if you jump up and down on it, you can dent it. The Shake XD, I actually have on my own house. Uh, you can walk all over that product. As far as not getting up on a steel roof, this is the first time I've ever heard that story. Uh, that's the case with concrete tile. I know termite companies won't warrant any damage to them. Uh, the manufacturer for concrete tile will ask that you put down uh, four by eight panels of uh, walking pads. Basically it's a polyfoam product that goes over flat roofs to walk on it, but they will not warrant uh, damage on those. Hope that answers your question, I, th I think. Um, my, my other question is, um, how easy is it to um, later put on solar panels if an applicant, because this roof, my understanding is stays on for 50 years. Um, is there, um, is this an easy roof to um, handle solar panels? The Tilcor and the Decra Shake are going to be more difficult uh, because they require an underpan underneath them. As far as the Decra Shake XD, it's a lot easier because it's applied to, to uh, plywood. So it'd be just like doing a concrete tile roof. You'd have to bore a hole through. You'd have to put a flashing on a boot, and then you would put the solar panel stand in. Do uh, solar panel companies um, uh, have any issues with their contractors stepping on the roof or? Um... I'm, I haven't heard of any. Um, to just be like going on top of a concrete tile or, or wood shake roof, no different. Okay, are there any other questions for the applicant from the committee members? Uh, I have one more for the yes. um, Decor XD product. Mr. Lanthorst, how would the execution schedule be like compared to other typical synthetic or wood shake or um, Spanish tile roofs? Would it be longer? Would it cause the neighborhood to be a bit more noisy and uh, lengthy process? No, actually, it'll take about a week to do this project. It's very cut up. It's not an up and down product. 
but it's a lot quieter actually than than most uh, installs because you're not going to have a compressor going all day. The only time you have a compressor is to put down the two by two battens on the on the hips and ridges. The rest of the day, you just hear a little screw gun, which is really quiet. It just goes zzz, 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 putting in the four screws per panel. Whereas a nail gun, when you're putting down concrete tile or wood shake, you have a pop, 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 consistently seven in the morning till four in the afternoon. So it's actually so the, a lot quieter. The this, one week this is, a lot quieter. is from taking down the old roof to the completion or from yes, sir. putting in the, the, the um, wood deck foundation or something? Yeah, everything should take about seven days. Okay. Start to finish. Okay, and any other questions for the applicant or applicant's representatives? I have one, one more. Mm -hmm. Do you, it's a dumb question, but do you always remove the wood shingle underneath? Yes, you have to. Law record, state law requires it. They used to allow you to go over it years ago, but you have to require, they require it to be removed now. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I did, I did look at the roof, um, that's a tail core on, on Van, on Van Dyke. Uh, it was recently installed um, and where the pieces come together, there is like a, like a, looks like a tar or dark, like glue. It's not um, material. It's like a goop uh, where mm. the two joints go together. Um, do you know what I'm talking about? I'm, no, no. Was there a flashing or a, have something been, there? Have you, um, it's not, it's, it hasn't been there that long. Have you gone to the roof since it's been completed? No, I usually when we're, when we're done, I don't come back. You, did you, did you, do you, when you go to the roof when it's completed, do you always inspect it yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on the job every day. Every day? Every day. Sometimes twice a day. Sometimes three times a day. <laughs> I'm there every uh, single day. I don't know if you can see it. I don't, I don't have it on my computer. It's, um, it's, um, I don't think it's see it on my phone. Was it a valley? No, it's where the two pieces come together to make the point. Let's see. <laughs> Can you see Wait, it? Hold it steady. Hold it steady. Hold it steady. Don't move. Go up a little bit. Okay. Yeah, there. Stay there. Do you see that? Yeah. It's like, and it looks like there's like all the all the points. They're just kind of like glue like, or tar or something. It's probably caulking. It's probably caulking from underneath. Now, um, is that, I don't recall them all being finished like that. So it looked um, quite, it looked a little messy, to be honest. Um, is that something because of the shape of the roof or is it the quality of the? Um... It's probably because of the way it connects. It's like if you go to a concrete tile roof and they have turrets where you're going to see multiple areas come together, you're going to see mud going out around the whole turret on top. It's kind of like that where it's coming all together. If you go to different concrete tile roofs and you have multiple areas like an, uh, that come together, three spots, then you'll see mud around that whole circular area because they have to cap that. And they have to en encapsulate, it, encapsulate it basically. But on the brochures for the, um, from the company, they don't have that look. They just have a nice clean together. Oh, so. Yeah, yeah. Of course, they're going to take the, the, the easiest roofs, just like concrete tile would. Just like wood shake wood, they're going to do the easiest example that they can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any other questions for the applicants' representatives? Okay. Seeing none, we will now open this up to public comment. Is there anyone here to speak for, against, or about the project? I believe yeah. we had someone here to speak from the public. I'm here. I, oh, yes. I muted. Uh, I, I can hear you. Can hear me. Um, okay. okay, if you would kindly uh, keep your public comment uh, under five minutes, we would much appreciate it. I'll do my best. Uh, my name is Michael Johnson. I live at 1300 Bellhaven Road. Uh, and I'm just very interested in roofs. I have no, no other interest in the, in the whole matter. I like, I think stone, stone coated steel is very good. Uh, two comments regarding animal or regarding the products that kind of come up. Uh, 
the uh, my neighbor two doors down has a steel roof put on by Mr. Lansford about seven years ago. And I was talking to her about something else the other day and uh, she was, she mentioned, I don't exactly remember why, but she mentioned she liked the stone coated steel because those little uh, stone parties, particles do not come off as opposed to her previous uh, roof of, uh, composition where they, they do come off. And I have a composition roof and they, the little particles do come off. And apparently they do not with the stone coated steel. Anyway, that was one thing she liked about it. Uh, regarding animals, um, the uh, uh, birds you heard about last month, I've also heard uh, that a steel roof is great if you've got raccoon problems. Uh, one lady I talked to 20, 30 years ago about that. She was real happy with her steel roof because it kept the raccoons out. Um, I point, I want to go on with a couple other items. Uh, my whole thing is safety first. And with regard to earthquake and fire, I think steel is probably safety first. Uh, the fir first thing we should be concerned with, uh, much better than uh, wood and of course better than uh, stone coated steel or um, uh, composition. Composition is, uh, is, is its best rival. Um, the uh, nationwide composition is the biggest seller. Uh, as far as neighborhood compatibility, uh, we have six votes from the neighbors for this project, one against and three no response. Uh, ten, 10 of the uh, 10 neighbors. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, that settles the compatibility issue because they, they voted for it. Uh, and that the neighborhood is what is supposed to be the comparison item. And the neighborhood is defined as the, what is it, the two houses on either side and then across the street and three houses behind, although there isn't any really behind on this particular product except one. Um, the, uh, uh, the trend has been for, towards uh, getting rid of uh, the, the wood for the non-wood. I live in the next uh, um, area over from this, now called San Marino Highlands somehow. Uh, and the, uh, it was originally 100% wood. My own survey of walking around and looking at every roof shows that it's now about 28% wood, uh, much of which, most of which is very, is old and not looking so good. And it's 72% non-wood. So the trend is to get away from wood. Uh, people are voting their choices when they can. Uh, lastly, pardon me, uh, San Marino really does like diversity. Uh, they recently did a historical survey of about half, the, about half the city was involved and they found 251 individual houses of some particular historic value or merit. Uh, it's maybe the style of the house or maybe who lived there in some cases. There's some Nobel Prize winners who lived in the city. Uh, and, and politicians and so forth. Might be the particular use uh, or uh, the oh, that's a, an antique house. Anyway, uh, they found 251 of these houses. And also in, in the listing them, they also identified the home styles. There are 32 different home styles. A few uh, styles, there's only maybe one or two representatives, but and some had many. But the point is San Marino has diverse home styles all over the place. And we're not running around here wanting to tear down houses because they don't look real pretty. or don't look like the way we uh, found it. The most fascinating name I saw in that list was that there are some storybook houses. And the, the Coniston, Ave or Coniston Place, I guess it is, which is two block long street has five of them. Uh, so when had to go had to go take a look, they're very interesting. Um, and although they're very, very different and might not be technically compatible, if one of them got put on the middle, it got magically moved over onto my street, I'd be very happy to see it. The uh, point is, again, San Marino is very diverse. Uh, it's been said by people I respect that no two houses in San Marino are alike. So let's keep up with diversity and put up with a good new roof. And that's my talk. Thank you. Uh, are there any other members of the public here to make public comment? Yeah, hi, uh, my name's uh, Peng Q. Uh, I live at um, 2186 Melville Drive. 
And um, I'm here not only to support the Lings, but also uh, I, I too am in need of a new roof shortly and share the same concerns regarding a wood shake roof. Uh, first question is, is the city's preference that uh, houses have wood shake roof? Because my understanding was uh, from about 15 years ago that um, wood shake roofs were being uh, uh, disallowed in San Marino. Um, we are not, the purpose of the public comment uh, portion is really for you to uh, make comments about this specific proposal that is in front of us. Um, so it's not really the time for us to answer questions, but very briefly, um, the city at the moment, I believe is, does not allow full replacement of wood shake roofs. And I believe, I believe that the planning commission has been, I believe that there has been some discussion in the city about whether or not to uh, reintroduce uh, some, some type of wood shape roof replacement. Okay, because. So, but I hope that that answers your questions briefly, yeah, but if, if you could keep your comments to sure. the, okay. uh, to, to the uh, proposal at hand. Sure. Okay, so uh, anyways, I want to say that uh, prior to living on Melville Drive, I lived at uh, 1525 uh, Bradbury Road, which is actually eight houses north of the Ling residence. And uh, that house had a uh, aluminum shake roof, which was not only uh, beautiful, but it was uh, maintenance free and um, also harmonious with all the other houses in the neighborhood. And and so I, I think there is, there's a big advantage to the synthetic material as opposed to the wood shake roof, not only for um, state safety reasons, but um, as far as expenses, as far as um, the longevity. And, and not only that is um, wood shake roofs are, uh, I currently have a wood shake roof and I have a uh, difficulty getting the house insured because of it. So yeah, that, that's all I want to say, thank you. Yes, thank you. Are there any other members of the public here to speak for, against, or about this project? Hi, um, yes. my name is Diana Ling. Um, I'm a resident, I'm sorry. I think I need to turn on my light. Um, I just want to say that I live in the house and um, had gone around the neighborhood and got all the signatures. And I want to stress that nine out of nine of my immediate neighbors sign off on it. Uh, and I show them brochures, pictures, websites, and everything. So they are well aware of what the, the products um, will look like and they do not object to it. Um, and I want to also stress that um, whatever roofing materials is out on the market, they all want to mimic or want to be like a wood product. So most of the neighbors near me, you know, um, what I'm trying to say is that, you know, the, the products that we want to put forth is compatible and it blends in with the neighborhood. And I, and I appreciate having lived here for 42 years almost. Um, how the city has done such a good job to keep everything, you know, aesthetically pleasing um, over years and years. And that is a, a plus. And that's why we have lived here for so many years and, and continue to. So I just wanted to stress that, you know, um, it is uh, important to know that we appreciate how things are and we want to be the same, keep it the same, keep it going. And therefore uh, the products that we selected are not going to stand out at, uh, like a sore thumb. Uh, if anything, it blends in with um, our surroundings. So that's all I wanted to say and thank you for your time. Thank you. Just to clarify, you are the applicant? Yes, I'm okay. the daughter of and the resident of uh, this house currently. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any, so just to be clear, are the applicants portion of, I understand that there was maybe some confusion, but the applicants, the 
the portion of the hearing where we hear from the applicants is has been um, complete completed already and I'm we already heard a uh, public comment are there any other members of the public here to make um, any comments for against or about this proposal Okay, seeing none, uh, we will now close the public hearing and we will now move on to committee member discussion. Um, <clears throat> committee member Cheng. Sorry, trying to unmute myself. Um, it's always been a, uh, a torn uh, when, I, when I see and hear homeowners want to have certain products uh, that that is either too new for us to uh, put on the peer approval list, or is not in not in the market long enough for us to to easily put that uh, material uh, to be an acceptable material. Uh, this is one of them. I, I remember we spent over an hour on the home at home uh, talking about that peacock problem, and and we. The, they, they come up with a very strong case and the, the committee uh, went along and wanted to see it. Uh, evidently, they just put it up maybe this week and we're not ready to see it yet. I definitely would like to see that personally myself and see how it looks from different angle. Uh, some of the uh, comments, uh, uh, Commission and uh, Member McKay said that about uh, when, when, when material comes together in a point that they don't have the solution uh, to take care of that particular solution, unfortunately, there is a problem that we're gonna face because no manufacturer at this point in time can come up with all conditions and come and then take care of the aesthetic value, take care of all the other problem. What the question was asked earlier about the uh, solar panels, most of the tile roof that I knew, including my own home, uh, the tile have to be removed piece by piece for the uh, solar panel area. But before they apply that, they put in the asphalt shingle roof, put, apply the panel and then slip the tile back so it looks correct visually. But because of the fact that they really cannot apply either over on top of the, the, the concrete tile roof and or I don't think they can apply it over the, the metal roof itself anyway because the metal roof actually raised away from it and they may have a problem with that too. And you cannot take them out piece by piece. So there are some pros and cons on every type of roof in front of us. Um, um, my, my thinking at this point is that we are, we are still constantly searching, especially last year, we lost an entire year talking to the manufacturer's representative, bringing the actual piece in front of us so we can look at it. Uh, doing virtually is uh, just almost impossible uh, to understand how it works. So um, I I still feel that we need more time to to look at the look at a quote unquote and, and a proven approvable metal roof to simulate the look of wood, uh, which is even though we hear from the installer and some concerned neighbors that would like to see it. I just, I don't, I think we would do a fair um, uh, help to our neighbors by allowing them something that they may be regretted later. Uh, so at this point in time, uh, there is not enough evidence that uh, the Ling family cannot find another workable roof that are, that are quote unquote, even more proven to be workable in the city. So I would, I would like to continue this one until we have a better chance to look at the completed one and home it. Uh, so we can have all the questions answered before we, we make a decision on this particular product and deco product. So that I, 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 would, I would like to continue this myself. I, um, I don't feel comfortable to approve the way it is now without seeing one product. Complete the product. Okay, thank you, uh, Vice Chair Wong. Uh, I agree with Mr. Chang. It, it it is somewhat of a pity that um, the committee doesn't have a chance to look at the finished product 
and even chat with your homeowner at Homet and see how it's like. Because that really was supposed to be a, an example, a test case for us to open our horizon of possibility. So I'm also am not able to have enough information and confidence tonight to give this project a go ahead right away. And I'd like to see it myself on the finished product uh, and then uh, put everything into perspective so I can support and continue for tonight. Thank you. Community member Lycon. Oh yeah, thank you. I agree with the, uh, um, my uh, fellow commissioners and, and uh, I would like to see the, uh, the roof um, that has been um, applied already. And I haven't seen one that we've approved that I've gone back and looked at that I actually think is um, uh, a really nice example of a substitute for wood shakes. So I am, um, I'm really not comfortable um, uh, approving this one tonight and I would also support a continuance. Thank you. Thank you, committee member McKay. Thank you, I 100% agree with my fellow committee members. I agree with staff that we should continue the project to allow them time the applicant, the applicant's representative, time to consider an alternative. And uh, we simply can't uh, sight unseen, just uh, uh, approve um, a material that we haven't seen um, as applied. And uh, we haven't seen Homet. And frankly, I, I'm not sure about this color either. So uh, there just uh, is not enough before us to be able to approve it. So I support a continuance, thank you. Thank you. Uh, alternate committee member, Tony Chow. I think Tony drops out. I don't see his name. Oh. Um, do we know if he's here? I think he might be having some connection issues. Uh, earlier, he, he had to rejoin. So it might be happening again. Okay. I mean, I think that that's all right because uh, we, we have the majority of our committee here and they've made their comments. So uh, if he comes on before I, uh, when I finish my comments, we can go back to him. Um, I just wanna say, I agree 100% with everyone. I, I would like to see what we've got um, already installed uh, and perhaps, um, perhaps we can get some other addresses to go look at. Uh, nearby, perhaps North San Gabriel or something. Um, and so I would so I support a continuance as well. Uh, is is uh, is Mr. Chow back on Zoom? No, nope. doesn't look okay. like it. No, that's fine. Then we we can. Um, I will just ask for a. Uh, I will ask for a motion. I'll go ahead and do that then. I, I move to continue design review case number DRC 21-05 uh, to a future date uh, when they are ready to resubmit for staff recommendation. Okay, I'll second that. Okay. Uh, Committee Member McKay? Yes. Committee Member Lacon? Yes. Uh, Committee Member Chang? Yes. Vice Chair Wong? Yes. And Chair Batnich? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Choi, we, we did not, uh, or um, and Mr. Zarates, we did not uh, specify a date of the continuation. Is that something that we need to do, or is that something that you arrange with the applicant at this point? Um, uh, we can determine that. that the the motion, mm -hmm. um, um, being that we'll the motion ahead. was um, by committee member Chang was to bring the project back in a future day. Correct. That's perfectly fine. Um, staff will provide notices to the neighbors. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, so that so the motion uh, carries. That's continued. I just uh, wanted to clarify something with you, um, Ms. Choi and Mr. Cervantes. I if I, I thought the city council 
did um, just to answer the question that was asked before very briefly, did the city council actually pass a measure to allow wood shake beginning, I think this month or next month? So the item recently went to the planning commission um, mm -hmm. for discussion. As a matter of fact, it was a week ago, um, last Wednesday. Um, the decision was to bring the item back to the planning commission because the planning commission had um, some question that they would like to um, solicit the fire chief's um, input on. Um, so they're, oh, I see. they're going to have a little more discussion um, before Director Cervantes introduced the items to the city council for final approval. Oh, I see. Thank you. That answers, that answers my question. And I believe that the question that um, uh, one of the gentlemen here for public comment was asking. Thank you. Uh, okay, so we, um, our next meeting is on the 16th? 17th. 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 Okay. Well, thank you everyone for your help and your hard work as always. And uh, we will now adjourn the meeting until the next meeting, which is March 17th. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ho. Good night. Bye. Thank Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.